Brock Faber right now is he just needs some he needs some help, man. He needs some milk. He needs some help. And it's and I can imagine like we saw it post game. Like he's he's showing frustration rather than just like pure professionalism, you know, the the generic hockey answers. Like, no, he's fired up and he's like he's trying to will this team to a playoff spot. And he's the in my opinion, he's right there with Kaprizov as the best player on this team. And he can't do it alone. He can't no. do it alone on the back end. He can't, and you know this is why this is why the Calder debate is so funny because he, all respect, all respect to Connor Bedard, but what is he being asked to do? He's being asked to score goals. What is Brock Faber being asked to do? He's Carry the a team in the playoffs. N- number one defenseman. He is playing number one penalty kill. He is drawing the number one offensive player from the other team as his most common assignment playing power play like he just he is just doing everything that he could possibly do and i'm pulling up the number here now um had a a fan a locked on wild listener tip me off to this and i knew he was in the top five previously but he is third in the nhl amongst anybody in minutes played he's got 1781 minutes played in 71 games Trailing only Rasmus Dahlin and Drew Doughty. And I was gonna say and Drew Doughty. That's insane. And he's he's he and you know what's uh crazy is I've been monitoring that stat all season as well. And he's he's been at three a couple times. He's gone no lower than five, right? Yeah. And Doughty's always been number one because <laughs> Doughty's been like number one his whole career. Um shout out to Drew. You love to hate him, but you you can't knock him for for how hard he plays and how lo- and how much he plays there on the ice. That's incredible for a rookie in the National Hockey League. Yeah, and it's not like he's it not it's not like he's just a minute munching defenseman. Like he's got 40 points on the season. He's got 7 goals. He has played 41.2% of possible ice time for the Minnesota Wild this That's season. Crazy. It's insane. Like when when you hear it and you all are hearing it right now, some of you are seeing it on YouTube. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Wow. It's- He's just, so good. He's so good. Like again, we're, we're spoiled. We're like, oh, he's the best player on the team. Kirill Kar- Kaprizov is, you know, superstar. Obviously, the Wild wouldn't be anywhere without him. But like, Faber's right up there. Like, you have to have a top scorer. You got to have a top center, and you have to have a top defenseman, and you need a top goalie. But to win a Stanley Cup, and at least they have two of those four pieces. But uh, yeah. we need a little bit more work at center. Um, four point five one blocked shots per sixty minutes. One point three five points per sixty minutes. Um. 8.59 shot attempts per 60 minutes. Just like I, I could How go is there on. a debate? How is I there could, a debate? It, Honestly, I, for, for a call, like it, it, it makes no sense. If, if you look at it like that, if you even do some research to those stats and, and let alone watch all the games like we do. That's nuts. Blackhawk fans are out to lunch, man. All those trying to troll us on Twitter. They're all out to lunch. Yeah. Like it's, I, I just, I can't even. Do you value points or do you value the overall? It, like Bedard is a mind. Points for a, a defenseman. He has good points for a defenseman too. So I feel like you can't even just you can't even use that argument against him because he but, does have the points. Bedard is a minus minus thirty seven <laughs> on the season. That's like historically bad because the other thing too that was pointed out is that Chicago's goalies this year. Have essentially been league like league average, so it's not like they're giving up a ton of goals over what you'd expect. To where it's like, oh yeah, the goalie had five awful goals that he gave up. No, they're playing it. They're playing league average, so that makes that number look even worse. Hundred percent. And and how I look at it is like Bedard is everything we thought he would be coming into the league. He's going to develop more of a two way game. He's going to. You know, there's going to be more pieces that develop around him that the, the Chicago Blackhawks build around him so that he can be that, you know, Connor, Mc, uh, Connor uh, McDavid-esque type player. I just watched Roadhouse, so I almost said Connor McGregor. <laughs> um, he, he, like, that's going to happen. He's going to get, he's going to be at one point probably the best player in the league. Yeah. But in his rookie year, and this is a rookie award, when you have a rookie, I mean, it's, it's not Faber's fault. He's not a fucking forward, right? He's coming in. Whoops, I'm getting so fired up here. I'm knocking off my mic. Coming in <laughs> as a defenseman, doing everything asked 
by a player in that position. Connor yeah. Bedard is not, you know, checking the box for for his two way game, even an average two way game. Whereas Faber is, like we just talked about, there is exceeding in every single thing that not only a rookie defenseman needs of his caliber, but a top defenseman in the National Hockey League. So that's why there's no debate, man. There's there shouldn't be a debate. There shouldn't be. It it seems it seems pretty clear cut, at least to me. Um, and, and you like, let's just end the insanity. I did want to, I'm going to see if I can quick pull up one other number that I wanted to try to further, um, further well, drive this home. And, and while you're looking that up, I gotta say for anybody who bet on favor to win the Calder award at the beginning of the season, I want, let us know in the comments, what odds you got him at, because like, I, I just want to congratulate you. I just want to congratulate. Cause even, even if, even, if, you know, he gets robbed and Bedard gets it. Like you still had the the cojones to drop some money on that. And I respect that more than, you know, as a fan of, uh, of defensemen in the national hockey league. Um, like Faber has 134 blocks, 59 hits. And in 71 games, he has 33 giveaways. Bedard 22 blocks, 43 hits. And he has 47 giveaways. Um, what was the, it was, I was looking for point shares um, just to try to... Oh, here we go. So Bedard has 4.2 offensive point shares and 0.4 defensive point shares, which they say adds up to 4.7. 2 plus 4 is 6 last time I checked. So 4 they're, points. They're rounding up. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to be generous. Um, And for Faber, Faber has... 2.3 offensive point shares, 3.9 defensive point shares for a grand total of 6.3 point shares this season. Like that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. Stop the count. Wow. Yeah. Let's hope that uh, some of these journalists and writers do their homework, man, and don't just go on hockey DB like us plebeians, honestly. <laughs> Because I feel like some of them do. I feel like some of them do. And and I almost feel bad for Russo in that, like, people are dragging him through the mud. Like, oh, it's just because it's Minnesota. And it's like, no, dude, it's no. not. We just it's laid not. out a bunch of different ways in which it's just, it's not even a comparison, honestly. Yeah. 